Wrestle Wednesdays, a CKDS US production. I am Sean the Freak Show. Crazy Cowboy on the other side. And today we're going to be discussing with you professional wrestling of today and yesteryear. We were uh, discussing earlier before things went awry. Awry? Awry. I like Ryan Ryan. You mean batshit crazy? Yes. That sounds more like fun. Um, 1990s wrestling was probably when, when the business was booming. Everyone was making money, everyone was going to see shows, there were three humongous companies being World Wrestling Federation, World Championship Wrestling, and Extreme Championship Wrestling. Mm-hmm. I still consider ECW one of the top three because mm-hmm. without without ECW doing what they did in the early 90s, we would have no attitude there. And there would be no hardcore style anything. <laughs> well, the hard, I think the hardcore style stemmed from Japan, True. FMW, and Mick Foley's a fucking madman. <laughs> um, I you watched him many hits and not kill anybody yet. So. Well, well, I just I just don't understand how he can. Here, here's the conversation they had to have him and Terry Funk in, in Japan. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do tonight, Nick? Blow me up. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll need some tuna and do a casserole, and I think I don't want to blow you up today, Nick. No, Terry, blow my ass up. Hey, all the, more, the whole object does to make the crowd go, holy crap, is that guy still alive? Yeah, they got reactions of a Japanese crowd. For those of, you, those of you who don't know the difference between a Japanese crowd and an American crowd, an American crowd will boo you out of the building. An American crowd is a Harlem crowd for comedy shows. They will tell you they don't like you and why and where you can stick your mother. Okay? <laughs> Japanese crowds are damn near silent. At least they were when I was watching a lot of Japanese wrestling. They, they didn't pop. Like American Crown does. You actually had to impress them. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, ah, well, this is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, what the hell just happened? One of the biggest reactions I saw in a Japanese crowd was when Hayabusa, one of my friggin' idols in the ring, botched a springboard moonsault and snicker snapped his neck in half. He went to spring off the second rope with, with the line salt. Okay. Went to spring off the second rope, the rope rolled, and he landed 210 pounds. Right on his forehead. Ouch. And he, he literally, the back of his head touches butt cheeks. <laughs> it was bad. Um, that's when I heard the biggest reaction when someone actually got hurt. Not when Terry Funk threw mankind <coughs> onto C4 explosives. Um, they, they went, uh. And when the Hayabusa broke his neck, people almost rioted. And they cringe like, oh god! <laughs> oh, it, it was bad. If you get a chance, like, watch that. Find that video and watch it. It's fucking rough. <laughs> I'll have to. Just kind of for my time task. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's during our time, just part of the world. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people got let go from uh, WWE recently. Oh yeah. We okay. have notes. You ever consult the notes? Mm-hmm. We have referee Mark Harris. We have Evan Bourne, JTG. Drew McIntyre, Jinder Mahal, Oksana, Kurt Hawkins, Theodore Long, uh, Camacho, Brutus Clay, and Yoshi Tatsu. Brutus Clay being let go kind of sucks because he was one of the last bastions yeah. for big guys to get over. Yeah, there's a tweet that he wasn't the happy sometimes, but he said, eh, what the hell should happen? Right. I mean, now, what, what the, the one part that really bothers me on a professional level, because I'm a trained professional wrestler, as some of you know, as close as you don't. <laughs> I was a professional wrestler, and Drew McIntyre could tell a story in the ring like nobody I've seen of his, of his age bracket. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand why he got let go and Heath Slater still has a job. It's my personal opinion, and it's purely speculation, but I am all for hashtag fire Heath Ledger. Mm-hmm. Well, he probably just get bounced off a couple more times on the honest merry way. <laughs> the 3MB gimmick was awesome, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I, every t- place they went to, freaking the Union Jacks. God. It was a very adaptable we'll gimmick. <laughs> I love I love gimmicks that can change a little bit and still be part of the original, like, everything, the overall. Yeah, the they bring in Hornswoggle in that mix that just. Yeah, they had a huge little, a huge thing with that huge little thing. <laughs> Midgets. Um, little people. Sorry. PC here. Because my director could have stabbed me in the throat with a. For your cactus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm to shoot the coke down. So <laughs> right, okay. That's not here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, adaptable gimmicks is always cool. I really, uh, I really, I really like this, uh, discussing gimmicks in professional wrestling, like characters in professional wrestling. Yeah, there are many. <laughs> and there have been some awesome gimmicks that day, and there have been some absolute fucking turds. Or just what the fuck. <laughs> Golly fucking gooker. <laughs> you were a Guerrero, man. What the hell? I'm the boogie man. You know the, the worms. The boogie man. Well, yeah, but that was that was that was interesting. That was new. That was kind of off off the wall. It was a hell of a chair tactic. tactic. Right. And in, a, in, a, in an industry now where it's it's gone from being these character driven stories <laughs> to douchebags in speedos. Yeah. Like, think about it. Alberto, Alberto Del Rio. Just a Mexican douche in a speedo. Yeah. Triple H. <laughs> just a douchebag in a speedo. Um, Your favorite. Bitch Tista. <laughs> just a just a rich uh-huh. bitch. Just a rich bitch in a speedo. Spirit Squad. I <laughs> like the Spirit Squad, and I'll tell you well, why. Dolph Ziggler is one of them. Dolph Ziggler is one of them. One of my favorite gimmicks of all time in WWE was probably. Al Snow's Job Squad. Oh, yeah. Which originated... I forgot about that. Well, it originated from ECW. Because <laughs> he always just... Uh, there's a spot where he was talking to Head in the back one of the pay-per-views about, uh, you know, you didn't, you shouldn't have told him I was injured. I could have been on this show. Could have been out there doing a J-O-B on a PPV. <coughs> but instead, we're in the back on the shelf because I have a minor shoulder injury. He was legitimately hurt. And he just wanted to job out. <laughs> True. Also, one of my favorite ECW gimmicks, which we should have opened the show with, mm-hmm. which next time we're doing this, is, you know, we only have three words for you. Exactly. We're taking over. BWO, greatest, greatest fucking copycat gimmick ever. <laughs> you got Blue Meanie and a Fat Razor Ramon. <laughs> yeah. Just that was just, you know, what the you fuck? You got Hollywood you? Nova, <laughs> and you got... Stevie Richards as really skinny Kevin Nash. <laughs> Probably the most lulls I have ever had thanks to professional wrestling. Because Blue Meanie is a fat guy who can do a moonsault. Yeah. That's the only reason I'm a wrestler now, is I'm a fat guy who can do a moonsault. <laughs> well, that was another interesting evening for my it was like you had you had the axe and there all their shit was just hilarious. Now, and the wars they had with uh Spirit Squad was even more better. Now, the, the biggest debate that I have with DX is, was DX an answer to the NWO? Or was the NWO an answer to the Generation X? I think that was, uh, New World Order was the answer to DX, in my opinion. Well, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a thing, but why did the NWO grow from being three or four guys? Like, because when the NWO first started, when the NWO first started, it was Scott Hall, Kevin Nash... They brought in Hogan, which is the biggest fucking swerve in wrestling history. Mm-hmm. And do you remember the next guy they brought in? The Rock? No, no, no. Oh, that, no, that was... I don't remember, I think. Not sure. The next guy they brought in was... Uh, <coughs> Rick Root. Oh, that's right. You know why? He was a WWF guy. Mm-hmm. Their whole gimmick was... This is uh, New York guys... In the Southern Territory, taking over. Because okay. they brought in Ted DiBiase. They brought in. I didn't know that IRS was a member of the NWO. Fucking, <laughs> I had forgotten that IRS was a thing. Yeah. And now his kids are famous, and I'm, <laughs> I'm still on a fucking couch doing a podcast. Because <laughs> I can't grow a beard like that, the majestic beard. <laughs> do a crab walk with my balding head. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Stole my gimmick. Hey, he can pull out. I can jump the spider pile. I can. I can do it, but not really well. <laughs> there was a point we were watching one of the the, the way the, 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 the white family promos mm-hmm. at my house, and I literally stood up, threw my pizza, and was like, they stole my shit. They stole my shit. <laughs> I do remember a little bit of that conversation. <laughs> oh, dude, I was so pissed. Because Bray Wyatt is just free show without thanks for it. Yeah. And an awesome beard. Hashtag, <laughs> Hashtag stole my gun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did he steal my gimmick entirely, he actually stole <coughs> my buddy's hashtag, bringing up hashtags. <laughs> uh, my buddy Joe does a gimmick, TerrorCon. Great gimmick. And Joe's a hell of a worker, a hell of a guy. You guys get a chance. 
Check out Terracon stuff, man. It's it's unbelievable. If Kamala and Vader had a butt baby, oh god, it, it, he's he's big, he's athletic, and he's fucking convincing, man. I love, love that guy. All one thousand. Love that guy. <laughs> Never let you go one thousand one hundred. <laughs> right, but he uh he had a thing. Mobsters are real. Mm-hmm. So all his shirts, his, his managers said it all the time. You know, and then started Twitter. We started tweeting out, you know, hashtag monsters are real. And not two weeks later, man, Bray Wyatt had the hashtag monsters are real right after follow the buzzards. Okay. Yeah. It was like follow hashtag follow the buzzards hashtag monsters are real, and Joe lost his shit. <laughs> like I, that, I've never seen that man get mad over much. Yeah. And he was fucking pissed. <laughs> now he's a he's a bigger cat than me. That's an Xbox achievement. <laughs> and he, and I would not want to be on the receiving end of one of his punches because that's a lot of weight behind the hand. So now that we're about halfway done with this, with this video, mm-hmm. um, we get back on top of about gimmicks. Oh, yeah. favorite, your favorite gimmick. What is your all-time favorite gimmick in professional wrestling? All-time favorite gimmick? Um, I would have to like say. Character gimmick. Oh, there's like so many to choose from. Oh, there's tons. I actually would have to say, God, I had like three of them, and I was just like, I had to be, uh, what the hell, shit. Describe it, I'll help you out. Yeah, if anything, it was, uh, ah, fuck it. Anywho. One of my favorite games of all time was actually uh, Papa Shango, only because it was really unsettling to look at, and... He made the Ultimate Warrior green, bleed green blood out of the space meeting, and I was confused. I'm not even sure I was old enough to be watching wrestling at that point. I don't think I was. So as a grown man, watching the replays, I didn't know what the hell happened, but I was convinced Papa Shango was a son of a bitch. So, job well done. But, but 1980s wrestling was so character driven You had Earthquake, Typhoon, Legion of Doom. <laughs> Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Savage, the Bushwhackers, everybody, man. And Jake Roberts. You know, Jake the, the Snake, Snake Roberts. Roberts. <laughs> that he still thing. got it. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, still. <laughs> and the thing with Jake Roberts is, like, I was watching uh, a couple of interviews with him, and I actually met the man. Mm-hmm. I met the man when he would wrestle for a while of cocaine. That's not a joke. That's uh, legit. That's, that's a thing. I was in there's the indie show. I wasn't on the show. I was at the show. I was like, fucking Jay Roberts. I'm fucking going. Mm-hmm. And this is a one with the height of his drug use. Mm-hmm. And dude, it was like, he's back in the back. And he's just sitting there, towel over his head, jacking out. It's fucking August. I'm like, I was like, I'm melting and dying. I'm wearing underpants. <laughs> he's in a jacket with a fucking towel over his head. Just shaking. I'm like, I was like hey, uh, no, Mr. Roberts, what's, what's wrong, man? All right, was there anything I can do for you? Yeah, kid. Find me a ball of cocaine and I ain't wrestling. You want me to find your coke? <laughs> I'm not the guy for that job. <laughs> I don't even smoke at this point in my life. I'm like, I don't even smoke cigarettes, man. I, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't, I can't, you know. About five minutes later, I'm like, hey, Jake, got the same <laughs> ball for him. <laughs> Someone found cocaine for Jake Roberts. Must have fell off a truck. <laughs> Must have. So he does have his eight ball of cocaine. Half of an eight ball of cocaine before he go, goes and puts another man's life in his hands in the ring. <coughs> and it, I just watched it switch flip, dude. It was, it was poetic and tragic all at the same time. Because he's back there and he's all towel on his head and shaking the pulls the tights on and he's got the bag and that head in a face thing. Mm-hmm. No one's looking cocaine up Jay Robert Blue on a blank out, all right? True. And I watched him. He <coughs> pulls the towel off his head, does it with his hair, and goes, <coughs> this is why I'm professional. And he strolls out the curtain. I'm like, what? <laughs> <coughs> I take three aspirin. I can't see straight, okay? You just boof an eight ball of coke and you're going to go wrestle. Holy shit. Thank God he's sober. Thank God he's clean and sober now, man. Props to DDP, DDP, saving that man's life. Mm-hmm. Get him in the Hall of Fame. Get in the Scott Hall both. Yeah. I've seen a couple of interviews where he was looking like shit, but now he actually looks better. But going back to my game, I have to be the Sandman. Ooh. Just yeah. walking out there like, I got a kendo stick. 
You want me to want to meet it? <laughs> you know, I got a crazy motherfucker. I got a funny story about the Sandman too. <clears throat> One of the interviews that I watched with him, he was talking about his original gimmick as the Sandman. It was a beach ball gimmick. Mm-hmm. It was a surfer gimmick. He come out there with a wetsuit. With a fucking surfboard. Oh, like Val Menace. <laughs> yeah, they weren't booing. His, like, I was getting the heat. But I wasn't getting the heat for what I was doing. Like, they were booing me because I sucked. You know, <laughs> I can't wrestle. I never pictured myself as the freaking dragon steamboat arm drag for days kind of guy. <laughs> you know, they were going to fire me. And then, you know, like, well, they probably should have. <laughs> the game was terrible. And then uh, ECW switched from Eastern Championship to Extreme Championship. <laughs> And they still had nothing for me. And I'm like, hey, always let hack be hack. Go out there, smoke a cigarette, or go out there and drink a beer, and hit someone with a fucking stick. And that went on for a few weeks, and then I was having to come out with a cigarette, and then the beer, <laughs> and for the crowd. And yeah, it was just, that, that was how easy it was. Like, let me just go out there and hit someone with a fucking stick. And that's when the, the Sandman. One of the most popular hardcore <coughs> on stateside was born because you couldn't wrestle. <laughs> I can't catch breaks like that, but I'm glad you did. More rough. <laughs> yes, I'm drinking my sippy cup. It's a Batman sippy cup. <laughs> so I'm a nerd on so many levels, but it hurts your brain to think about. Yeah, among the talent I released, uh, another was issue about Kurt Hawkins. One of the little characters that didn't get much TV time because after he has a little shindig, and he actually posted a quote after he on his release going, "My worst nightmare has uh, come true. I now I have to buy my own uh, wrist tape." (laughs) (laughs) When you have your biggest concern is buying your own wrist tape. I think you made it somewhere because even as a jobber, mm-hmm. which is what which is what he was. Yeah. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here. Yeah, he walked around with Mecca with a shit like a pip cane, looked like. Yeah, he, he he didn't have much of a gimmick. He was a douchebag in tights. <laughs> this wasn't as big of like a This wasn't as big of a douchebag as Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> Who should go to a cop shop? Oh my oh, god, that, yeah, he should go for the barista. <laughs> uh, I. Um, I can go on a rant about a bar the room. I don't think we have the time. <laughs> if your finisher is an arm bar, Alberto, if finish is a fucking arm bar, work the arm. Tell a story. Make me believe that arm breakers are going to break their fucking arm. Okay? This isn't UFC. You're going to go for a knee bar, and I'm going to wiggle my fat ass out of there, <laughs> and then you're all of a sudden Muay Thai my ass into a fucking arm bar? No. Sorry. These guys are built like brick shit houses. And you're taking more on that. They would power bomb you out of your gay white tights. You bitch. You bird. You fucking bird. <laughs> and they call it, what, as Mr. JBL says, the Mexican's greatest export. No, tacos. <laughs> tacos are Mexican's greatest export, JBL. Indeed. Not your illegitimate man child. <laughs> Yeah, we're also seeing Hornswoggle now. Now since three and B's gone, since the other two are gone, you have Hornswoggle and you have um, the other fucking idiot. So it's just like, oh, yeah, shit. is it Heath Slater and Hornswoggle now? Yeah, that that makes me a sad panda. Yeah. Well, if they if they bring back the kind of the half pint um, TLC match like they had previously, that, that was actually that, interesting. that was actually the best match of the card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pre show. I was like, what the fuck? So. We'll go to uh, new new wrestling now mm-hmm. for, for the last couple of minutes. The newest gimmick, the newest gimmick debuted mm-hmm. on Raw. Cody Rhodes as Stardust. I'm actually okay with this. I'm, re- I'm actually I'm really excited to see how he's gonna play it because he has the AJ Styles gloves mm-hmm. <laughs> with the star on them. Yeah, which is really cool to look at, and those really cool dark mall contacts. He bought half of his gimmick off eBay. <laughs> Or just took it, went into a freaking gold dust in wardrobe. <laughs> he took his brother's jumpsuit, <laughs> some contacts, and some AJ Styles gloves, and it fucking works, man. Yeah. Like, more power to you. I'm happy for you. That's one more Rhodes and a ridiculous gimmick. Now here's a question. Will he still use this Astro Kick? Or will he just stick with, uh, what? Diamond Dust? 
I think the disaster kick would be a, is a fantastic setup yeah. for his move set. Mm -hmm. I think that it, I don't think it was a finish though, because John Morrison used something to the effect. Starship claim that it was. Well, no, that was, that was a, yeah, that was, a, that was yeah. But he used a springboard roundhouse. If I call it the flying Chuck Norris. Yeah. Because the way oh, he, the Chuck kick. That's yeah. what I call it. Oh, that was the Chuck kick, wasn't it? Yeah. But I mean, I don't think it's a finish because you're not as big as like a Sheamus, mm -hmm. and it's not as, it's not as well articulated as like, uh, Shawn Michaels switching music. Mm -hmm. But it's, I mean, it's still a fucking boot to the head. I think yeah. it's a bad day. Well, hell, that, that, Rowan doing just like shit. Right. That Diamond Dust is it's a good solid like it's a set finishing move mm -hmm. in Japan. Same place the GTS came from. Same mm -hmm. place Daniel Bryan's Flying Knee came from. Mm -hmm. Stuff in Japan. So, uh, you know, with that, at Stardust, fucking one thumb up from me is while their hands hold them. A couple boos. I'll, I'll, I'll put three, including a toe. That's a three and a Batman. <laughs> Good on you, man. So, uh, in closing, we are CKDS Radio US Edition, and this is one more for the good guys. Play it again.